This video will change your opinion about one of Ichiro Oda's decisions for a series One Piece completely. One Piece has been going on for 1055 chapters. And in these we only saw a handful of deaths. Many would say this is one of Oda's weaknesses, as he just dislikes killing his characters and end an arc on a sad note. Just think about it, almost every arc ended with the Straw Hats being completely victorious and then leaving the island in a rush before a third force appears, or they get chased again. This was the case in Arabasta with Hina, it happened in Water 7 again with Garp, in Dressrosa they had Fujitora on their tail and in Whole Cake Island Big Mom personally chased after the Straw Hats and I'm probably missing a few other cases where they have been chased off an island after they won. Oda is a man who stays true to his beliefs and this can be seen in many parts of his story. That's why today I will explain to you how the legendary Pell the Falcon survived. What many fans believe to be a situation where death was guaranteed, so Pell shouldn't be alive right now, but Oda has good decision making and he has reasons why Pell is alive. So Flamio Hot People. My name is Pyro Prima, and today I've come to you with another theory. And let me tell you, it is crazy and just for the fun of it. Because I am currently in London preparing new videos and different things and also just relaxing a bit. But for now, let's get into this theory. This also helps me with coping how Pell actually is still alive. So maybe you can add it to your headcanon as well. Ichiro Oda loves mythology. It is a fact that can be seen everywhere in One Piece. But let me tell you, Arabasta had one of the most obvious mythological tie-ins. The two head guards of the Arabasta kingdom are Pell the Falcon and Chaka the Jackal. And they are not only the head guards of the kingdom. Arabasta had another system called the Two Guardian Spirits. Apparently that was a thing where the two strongest warriors of Arabasta always get the bird bird fruit model falcon and the dog dog fruit model jackal. We all know that Arabasta as an island and also Chaka and Pell have a big connection to Egyptian mythology. For all of you that don't know anything about Egyptian myths, Chaka and Pell's fruits or even their appearances are based on the two Egyptian deities Anubis and Horus, which can be even seen more when they enter the hybrid forms. Anubis is the god of death, mummification, embalming, the afterlife, cemeteries, tombs and the underworld. Horus on the other hand is the god of kingship and the sky and a few other things as well. Horus is also one of the deities in Egyptian mythology that plays a major role in the Osiris myth and many others. So just as a quick sidetrack, Osiris is another god that is very important in Egyptian mythology. Osiris is the god of fertility, agriculture, the afterlife, the dead, resurrection, life and vegetation. So Osiris and Anubis share a few of their like fields of work if you want to call them that and there's already talking about afterlife, death and resurrection in both of these cases. So I guess you know where I'm going with all of these things. So in here we can find multiple explanations on how Pell actually managed to survive the explosion of the big bomb Crocodile had prepared. Yes, what I'm trying to say is, with the appearance of more and more mythological zones, like right now in Wano, and also fruits I personally like to call god fruits, wouldn't it be interesting if Pell's falcon fruit and Chaka's jackal fruit are actually the mythical variations Horus and Anubis? Arabasta is the only kingdom out of the original 20 kingdoms that didn't decide to relocate to Marijoa. So technically Vivi and the other members of the royal family are also celestial dragons. So who is to say that they haven't prepared a method to protect them against the other kingdoms? I mean we all know how evil basically the celestial dragons are and if they didn't think about getting rid of this like Nefertari family because they know some secrets of the past maybe it wouldn't be that stupid to make some defensive measures like having some devil fruits that are very powerful to protect yourself. So what if since ancient times they had the Anubis and the Horus fruit in their hands and kept giving them to the two strongest warriors, the two head guards of the kingdom, but to keep them safe from the public and safe from being stolen, they renamed them into just being the falcon and the jackal fruit. That wouldn't be the first time fruits got renamed as well in the One Piece series. I should also add this. I will talk about certain things that are manga only, so if you don't want to be spoiled on events that haven't happened in the anime just yet, you should probably go to another video of mine because they are all nice to watch. So now, let me get some of the ideas on how Pell managed to survive into your heads. 
The first option is this. When Crocodile attacked the kingdom, Chaka had to see his man die without getting the chance to even fight and die honorably in battle. This angered Chaka so much that he instantly attacked Crocodile. Plus this also gave Vivi and Koza the chance to run away and try to end the revolution that was going on right now. But we all know that Chaka was easily defeated by Crocodile and at this point we already knew that Crocodile was or maybe still is merciless. There was no reason to spare Chaka if he just killed the Tsumigeri guards. By the way, these guards aren't unnamed characters either. From left to right they are Hyota, Brahm, Arrow and Beryl. So saying that named characters don't die is even for One Piece not true. These characters, while not that important, have names and have been shown to be quite the powerful fighters in the Arabasta Kingdom. So how did Chaka manage to survive if he fought against the same crocodile as his guards before? Well, this is similar to Luffy's case against Kaido. What if Chaka actually died? And this resulted in him awakening his Anubis fruit, allowing him to come back from the dead. And now with the powers of Anubis, he managed to keep the people important to him and the allies on his side safe. Just think about what was going on in the Arabasta arc for the Straw Hats as well. Just think, Zoro vs Mr. One, he was heavily injured and this was another case of Zoro being close to death if you think about it. But maybe Anubis saved them. Nami was also severely injured against Miss Double Finger for the first time I think in her battles, but Anubis was there to save her. Also, Usopp, who basically had most of his bones broken in his fight against Miss Merry Christmas and Mr. Four, is also still alive. How did all of these things happen? But most importantly for this theory, Pell. Pell was supposed to die, but Anubis is the god of death and he deemed it too early for this guardian to die. Protecting him from the blast of the explosion and making him fall to a random hospital located in a location where there is no reason for a hospital at all. Just think of it. This hospital is randomly located somewhere in the desert. Why was it there if not for plot convenience or some other power that made Pell exactly fall there? Now, did you like this theory or the part of this theory? Because I am not done yet. I also have a second option for you that doesn't include Chaka saving his partner. Even though it's also possible to combine the different theories together. Now let me just say it. It would be really amazing to see Pell and Shaka return in the final war and they get revealed to be the users of the Anubis and Horus fruit respectively. That would push them up to higher levels and make them able to compete against way stronger enemies. Just think about it. Now that there's a lot going on for the Arabasta Kingdom, Pell and Shaka as the two head guards, as the two strongest people in Arabasta, they need a power up if they want to be able to protect Vivi and the other people. Just, they are not able to fight against CP0, against revolutionaries, against Yonkos or the commanders or admirals and all of these things. I don't say that if their devil fruits were Horus and Anubis, that they instantly would be admiral level, but they would at least be pushed on to a higher stage. Because I also think that Pell and Chaka have this syndrome of being like introduced too early in the series, because Crocodile was really really strong and these two characters, Pell and Shaka, would be insanely strong as well, if you think about it. But because they got introduced in the first saga after they entered the Grand Line, they have been downplayed a bit in my opinion. But for now, let's get to the theory on how Pell managed to rescue himself. At the end of the Alabaster arc, the Straw Hats, Vivi and Pell discovered a massive bomb prepared by Crocodile that was said to be able to destroy around 2.5 kilometers of, ra in, of radius. Short tangent, we all know that explosions are the weakest form of damage in One Piece. So without any fancy theories, I could still believe that Pell managed to survive the explosion while just being a normal falcon. But is he just a normal falcon? After all, he is one of the two strongest fighters in the Arabasta Kingdom. A kingdom that managed to survive over 1000 years in the Grand Line. Plus he has a Zoan Devil Fruit that already increases his durability and endurance. So technically with all these abilities, I wouldn't say it's too unrealistic for a pal to survive the explosion. But if that doesn't satisfy you, let's go back to the theory that just makes Pell a way, way cooler character. The bomb Crocodile has created can be compared to the real world Halifax explosion in 1917. I saw other comparisons to making Crocodile's bomb similar to the bomb on Hiroshima, but it's not really that similar, I think it's more similar to the Halifax explosion. It was an explosion that completely obliterated every structure in an 800 meter radius. 
and destroyed or badly damaged every building within a 2.6 km radius. This explosion had the equivalent energy of roughly 2.9 kilotons of TNT. I know that's a bit hard to visualize, so here's a short clip showing the explosion. So this is about the size of the damage the bomb Pal carried would have done. Pretty insane, right? The thing is, did Pal really carry this bomb at the end? While in the manga it was more like unsure if Pal was actually holding the bomb when it exploded. In the anime we obviously saw Pal holding the bomb until it literally exploded right in his feet or hand. So yes, let's just assume for this theory. Pell was holding this hand until the moment the explosion hit him. And that exact moment, the horse fruit awakened inside of Pell. Because we all know, devil fruits awaken, as Kaido said, when the body and the mind catch up together to the devil fruits. And maybe inside of this moment of death, this was the moment Pell finally caught up with Horus. Horus has many abilities that would help in this situation. As the god of the sky, he can control it to some extent as well. That means he can distort space, which would be dangerous in attack against an enemy. But in this case, it could also be used to get rid of the explosion and thus saving Pell. But as we saw, the explosion actually happening completely and the big ball of like massive explosive power there, we just believe that there was no reason for it to distort space and make this power disappear. So while this ability would be there for the Horus Fruit, it didn't get used by Pell in this moment. But a different ability could have been used to save Pell. Another technique Horus could use was his power to travel through the Duat. The Duat, if I even pronounce this word correctly, is basically the spirit world of gods and magic. And Horus, like many other gods, can enter this space with ease, allowing him to travel long distances through the separate dimension. Because Pell transported his body, or Horus transported Pell's body, to another location, he potentially could have saved himself from that explosion. And while mindlessly flying in a duat, he could have reached the location where the hospital was located. It could be seen as Horus guiding Pell to safety, or maybe this was Chaka as Anubis influencing Pell's life expectancy. There are many possible ways how this could have worked, and these two are just the most fun for me to ag actually agree with Pell surviving this. Because we've just seen all of these different god devil fruits or mythological devil fruits, and now the theories of Araki's. Is the name Araki, Green Bull's Devil Fruit being the Forest God Devil Fruit? There's a lot going on there because the Green Bull's Fruit is not the plant plant fruit, but the forest forest fruit, if you want to call it, or woods woods, how it's called in the official translation. So him being the Forest God doesn't seem to be far fetched at this point either. Even though I still want to believe that Dragon is the Rain God, Luffy is the Sun God, and Emu is the is there an Ocean God? No, there's the Earth God. I think Blackbeard is the Earth God, and maybe uh, Greenbull is the Forest God, and then there's a hidden Ocean God or something that has Emu or something. Some of these things could be going on, but that's not the topic of this video. So, as I said, Horus would have been the way for Pell to be saved in all of these scenarios, and this is not only because of the space distortion or the duet traveling. Obviously, a mythological Zoan would also increase his durability and healing factor by a lot which would allow Pell to survive all of these things better and just leaving with the big scar that we know he has now. And that's it, two gods protecting one island. An island that has been relevant since we first entered the Grand Line. For the first time with the Straw Hats and remains relevant because of certain events that happened at the Reverie and shortly after. One thing is for sure, protect Vivi from Imsama and the world government, Pell and Shaka need to become stronger. And what better method would be there than showing us that they always had hidden powers because of the fruits? Some would call this bad writing, but I personally really like this idea. I could go as far as saying that it was teased or foreshadows as we we'll obviously see the parallels between Anubis and Horus and Pell and Shaka. But no matter what Oda does, I think things will turn out to be interesting.
even if One Piece actually manages to finish in only 3 years, which would roughly translate to only about 120 more chapters of the series, I believe we are in for a lot of fun. And just let me go on the last tangent before we end everything. 3 years Oda? Are you serious? Only 3 years for finishing of Wano was happening right now, then finishing of Elbaf, maybe Shanks battle, then the battle for Love Tale against Blackbeard, then the battle against the Marines and the world government. All of this in only 120 more chapters? 120 chapters is almost less than, I think it's less than Wano. How the hell is he going to fit everything into 120 chapters? I want to believe that Oda is wrong about his like time management this time as well, but we're inching closer to the end of One Piece, so I guess he could be more accurate this time. But that's all from me for today. And all that's left to be said is stay healthy, stay happy, and most importantly, stay cultured. This has been Pyro Prima, and we will see each other in the next video. Until then, take care. Pyro out.